Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to continue the subject of SSDs and today we want to look at two Samsung SSDs with about two to two and a half years between them. Today I want to talk about the Samsung 990 Pro and the Samsung 980 Pro. Two SSDs from one brand that pretty much does everything in-house when it comes to the components, the distribution and more of their SSDs. Now chances are if you're watching this video it's because maybe you've got a PS5 to upgrade. Maybe you're upgrading our gaming PC or an editing rig, or maybe you've got some high spec new NAS and you're going to put in some SSDs as a storage pool or utilize them for cash. And whether you look at it, Samsung has always had a pretty decent reputation in the world of SSDs. And although more recently there was that bit of a dip to do with their firmware issues, something we've talked about in the channel previously. These two SSDs still kind of are good benchmarks in the area of Gen 4 SSDs right now. However, it is also worth us touching on that right now, Gen 5 exists. Gen 5 SSDs are sitting there in the background, kind of knocking around there in the background going, hello, we're so fast, we're really expensive, and we get really hot, but we're here in the background. And that's true. So consequently, it will be understandable if you're on the fence a little bit about which one of these two drives to buy, given that there is a newer generation of SSDs around the corner. Now in this video, we're going to be looking at the stats for these drives, comparing them and talking about what's better or worse for your needs. There isn't any benchmarks. I've already done benchmarks on both of these in their own reviews. You can go to the description where we've linked to both the uh, 1TB and the 4TB performance and benchmarks of these two drives. You can check those out. But this is more of a buyer's guide to help you understand which is best for your needs. But that long intro aside, let's crack on with probably the most important thing for a lot of you, the old Wonga. And when it comes to the price point on these, despite that massive gulf of two to two and a half years release difference between these two ranges, the prices are actually pretty darn similar. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the price per terabyte of the 980 Pro, the older drives that were first revealed and released in autumn winter of 2020, you're looking at uh, arriving in a 250, 500 gig, 1 TB and 2 TB model with and without heat sinks more recently. Um, it is £67 per terabyte if you're basing it on the largest available capacity at 2 TB. And if you want it with the heat sink, it's £67.50 per terabyte. So I say pounds, it's dollars, of course, I mean. But nonetheless, that means that this drive is you know, pretty reasonable. That's about the going rate per terabyte of an SSD, really. What about the newer drive? Two and a half years have gone by. Is it going to be all crazy expensive or not? Well, using the 4TB as our guide, we can see that on the 4TB, it means that on the 1, 2 and 4TB drives, the price per terabyte averages out at £67.75. That's 75 pence more per terabyte for a newer, faster SSD. If you go for the heatsink, it averages out, again, utilising the 4TB model there, it's £69.75. So again, only have increased of a couple of nicker there between the two of them. So the result is, when you're looking at these two devices, that price-wise, despite that enormous gulf in release, because one isn't an upgrade of the other, they're both going to coexist, that the prices are not near enough identical. But you may have noticed when I went through the capacities, the 990 is only available in 1TB, 2TB and 4TB, whereas the 980 is available in 120 gig, um, or 128 gig, I think, if you factor in over um, over provisioning, 500, uh, 250, 500, 1TB and 2TB. So if you're looking for a smaller OS drive or for a caching drive there, or just a scratch disk to edit on with a larger, slower RAID array of drives, the 980 is a better scope of storage. Now, bear in mind, you go to those lower capacities, there's still a base level spend. So even though we mentioned 67 nicker per terabyte, that is reflective of the bigger capacities. When you go to the smaller one, smaller drives, not only do you get a lower performance, but on top of that, you also get a, a, a worse price per terabyte. But still nonetheless, if what you're looking for is the best value, it's that one, the 990 Pro right now, being of such a similar price point, but having the large capacities and higher performance, both in traditional read-write speed, something we'll touch on later, and in IOPS, in terms of value, that is the better choice. But the better range of capacities is definitely one that is better suited with the 980 Pro there. 
But what about the hardware? Because they're both in-house SSDs, right? They're actually incredibly similar when you look at them in terms of their hardware architecture. And unless you get your magnifying glass out, it actually looks phenomenally similar underneath that label across all of the capacities there. Now, the main, main, main difference comes down to the controller and the quality of the NAND on board. What I mean by that, they both utilize an in-house SSD controller. So that means it's a controller that is developed by Samsung themselves. They've not gone to the likes of Fizon or InnoGrit or Silicon Motion and used their third party controller like a lot of uh, SSD manufacturers have done. It's all in house. Uh, they use the Elpis or Ellipsis on the Samsung 980 Pro and we use the Pascal controller on the newer generation device. They're very, very similar. Even their part numbers S4LV008 and 003 on this they're incredibly similar but and they use similar firmware i might add the uh, pascal controller has just got a lot more oomph under the bonnet on top of that the nand that these both arrive with is vnand from their own production facility there but the layer count which allows for uh, a denser capacity per nand but also higher performance uh, across that uh, against durability has to be said that the 136 layer nand inside the 980 pro is overshadowed by the 176 layer 3d nand inside uh, the 990 pro there again both using vnand 3d tlc but has to be said that it is higher um, quality NAND there on the newer generation drive, something you would expect uh, for the newer drive. Now, they both arrive with DRAM. Uh, again, it's low power DDR4 LP, DDR4 memory. Again, one TB, uh, sorry, one gig, two gig, four gig, respectively, across the capacities. Again, there's no four TB there. But in terms of hardware architecture under the bonnet, unsurprisingly, this has just got better hardware architecture. And again, that was why we were talking about its value point just being better overall there and now the 990 pro feels like an organic upgrade to the 980 pro the 980 pro has been around for a good couple of years in a lot of hardware circles that's when you'd start to look at a refresh so i kind of assumed the 990 pro was just gonna you know remove the 980 from production but it looks like the 990 is still going to be with us for quite a while so Right now, the hardware architecture between the two of them, if you've got a system that has benefited from that extra two and a half, uh, two to two and a half years of development, your client system, your PS5, any of those systems that have benefited from further development and R&D in Gen 4 SSDs, this is the SSD that you should go for because it will be able to harness that extra performance over time as things have developed for more in the surrounding client system. But performance is vague, right? I already mentioned at the top of the video that I've already done reviews of both um, the 990 and 980 Pro drives in of their own spec, full of benchmarks on Atto, on Crystal Disk, on AS SSD, on AJA, and Windows uh, performance transfers as well. But for this video, because there's so many vague different systems out there, if we focus straight on those reported maximums, which these systems are capable of, high performance and the new one of course the new one's going to have higher performance because of the extra years of further development indeed when you look at the uh, 980 pro from late 2020 it's you know benefited uh, from late 2020 kind of developments in gen 4 and over that time there's been tweaks and improvements in firmware again there was that bad firmware we've alluded to already um but that uh, drive capped out at 7,000 megabytes per second reported maximum sequential read transfer and between 5,100 and 5,500 uh, maximum write uh, transfer of sequential data. Sequential is big bulky data that's all in a line, not random pulled from different areas of the disk. Now, the 990 Pro has a reported maximum of 7,450, an increase of 450, close to half a gig of data transfers maximum there. On top of that, it's the right performance that really does spike up at 6,900 or you know 6.9 gigabytes performance for sequential write there. So a big increase on write performance, but still half a gig and around about one to one and a half gig improvements on write, so read write across that. So it's just a better, higher performing drive overall, which again, is thanks to a lot of the development of Gen 4 architecture clients right now as well. On top of that, when it comes to 4K random IOPS, um, so when it comes to 4K, that is like four kilobit, a tiny bit of data, and random, as the name suggests, is where it's being pulled randomly as many as possible when IOPS in, uh, uh, in, um, input outputs per second, um, or IO. Between these two, again, 
huge improvements. When the 990 and 980 Pro rolled out, it was one of the first, if not the first drive with WD very close behind them um, to roll out with a 1 million reported IOPS figure. That is on both read and write 4K random, 1 million per second there. Whereas the 990 Pro has smashed it. Two to two and a half years later, 1.6 million over 1.5 million read, write respectively there. And again, if you go for the smaller capacities on both of them, both the performance and the IOPS do depreciate. But even if you compare the 2TB and the 1TB, things are better on the 990 in both that 4K and on the transfer speed. So it's just a better performing drive with better newer hardware under the belt and still arriving at a not dissimilar price point between them. Is there anything that will make us go for that 980 other than, you know, higher availability being on sale a lot and capacity? What about durability? You know, do we want these drives to work for a long time, right? You may or may not be aware that SSDs, they're just not as durable as optical drives. If you do daily reads and writes to them over a great deal of time, you know, the NAND can depreciate there. Again, you'd have to properly hammer some of these drives to, you know, surpass that of the five-year warranty that's included with it, but it's worth bearing that in mind. Now, between these two drives, you might be worried that the drive with the higher performance next to me there, that is the one that's gonna, uh, you know, uh, have a lower durability factor. Well, that's not really how this works, really, is it? Because just because the performance is higher, it means it's just going to transfer the same amount of data a lot quicker. As long as it's the same amount of data across both of these drives, you'll be pleased to hear that they both are pretty much identical in terms of durability with a terabyte's written rating of um, uh, three, uh, sorry, uh, 600 and 1200 terabytes written respectively on the 1 and 2 TB available on both of them. Obviously, the smaller capacity drives on the 980 Pro series have got smaller numbers at 150 and 300, and the larger capacity on the 990 Pro goes up to 2,400 terabytes written, but ultimately it means that both of them have a, an incredibly near identical 0.3 drive writes per day, or I think 0.38 drive writes per day if you wanna throw in some decimal places. But that just means that between the two of them, the newer drive isn't even more or less durable. It's exactly the same. So there's no benefits in terms of durability to go for the older drive, and indeed, I touched on it earlier on, and again, I've linked to it in the description. Samsung went through something of a PR blip um, earlier in 2023, late 2022, when they had a, a firmware update that was kind of knackering drives a little bit. That impacted both of them. So you can't even use that as a reason to pick between two of them. They've resolved that firmware matter, by the way. And I do think it's worth highlighting that firmware was probably available on a lot more of these than it was of these because this was very new there's only two capacities whereas that had been in the market for a very long time across a lot wider range of capacities and if you're running things like ps5 which you know love ps5 i've talked about it enough on the channel but there's no denying that it doesn't have the ability to update ssd firmware built in doesn't have it you can update the ps5 firmware good for you add on some features group chat why not but when it comes to the ssd firmware you can't upgrade it within the ps5 closed system you need a pc to do it now a lot of users that might be considering a drive for a ps5 um, or a closed system where they can't put on samsung magician or easily update the firmware because it's an external device there might be a lot of you looking at one of these two drives for that if you're buying an older drive and you're worried about the firmware and you're going to rely on whatever the base firmware is and you're never going to get a chance to update it, you might err more towards the newer drive because the newer drive is going to have the newer firmware and that firmware was identified very, 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 very early in the 990's life where it was substantially later into the 980 Pro's life and therefore there's a, what, there's a larger percentage chance of actually getting a drive that has that DUF firmware on board and you don't have the means to upgrade it. It's a very minor point and I hate to bring you know lottery-based figures into anything but there's no denying that if you are concerned about that, that might be the drive for you and I think that is the pretty much big takeaway from today's video isn't it that that might be the drive for you because this one benefits from newer development it benefits from a not dissimilar price point to that of the 980 pro it arrives with a better controller better nand higher performance and a lower percentage benefit a lower percentage chance of uh, receiving a drive that has that duff firmware if you don't have the option to upgrade it the 980 pro let's give it its due it's one of the earliest, if not the earliest, 7K drives to enter the Gen 4 scene for consumers. It was one of the most popular drives in the first generation of Gen 5, um, uh, so Gen 4 SSDs for PS5 that people went for. It was in the top three, with the Seagate Fire Cuda and WD Black pretty much all fighting for the top spot. 
On top of that, the range of capacities. If you're only looking for a small drive, one 120 gig Gen 4 SSD, there's actually not many options out there. Samsung still support it. Same goes for 250 and 500 gig. And again, it's regularly on sale because it's been in the market for a very, very, very long time. But ultimately, the 990 Pro is just a superior product in almost every other way. And if you're comparing them both, this is the solid choice. Again, if you want more information on that, the depth, uh, temperature, benchmarks there, a lot more information about the depthiness of the controller, and we go to some real microscopic stuff there, I recommend checking out those two reviews linked in the description. But this has been comparing the Samsung 980 Pro with the 990 Pro. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you need more help with choosing the right SSD for your gaming or video editing needs, use uh, the free advice section over on NAS Compares on the right-hand side of the screen of uh, the NAS Compare pages, uh, the Discord, the free community support forum at Ask NAS Compares, and of course you can use Ko-Fi or Patreon to find out more about the videos we've got working up, or you can hire me or my colleague Ed or to support you in what you're doing for free advice, either using the Fast Track or just use the free advice section and save yourself a few quid. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.